Testing. I think so. Testing. Yeah. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order this April 11th, 2024 curriculum, or no, we're on finance and facilities um, co committee meeting of the school district of Haverford Township. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'll turn it over to our business manager, Mr. Anthony Testa, to walk us through tonight's agenda. Great, thank you. So good evening. And our first item on the agenda is a Chatham Park and High School, um, excuse me, the middle school project timeline update. And we have both Jeff Straub and Ken Matthews here to walk us through what that looks like. Okay, um, we're going to start off this evening, I, I think, really more of, um, with a um, sort of a state requirement related to the project for Act 34, um, and I'll go through that in a second. And then really after that, I think it's more opening up both for me and Ken with any general questions the board would have on as we start to move forward to going to bidding for the project. So what you have in front of you is an Act 34 booklet, but it's, an ex it's really an excerpt. We're still completing components of the booklet right now, um, but I more wanted to talk about the overall uh, requirements because it's really, my understanding has been since Linwood was the last Act 34 that you had for the new construction. So we are in the limbo time period. I guess that's a polite way of stating it with Department of Education because there is a moratorium on um, reimbursement However, Act 34 is a state law uh, that sort of ties with reimbursement. Um, so even though the uh, reimbursements on, um, on moratorium, the Act 34 is still uh, moving forward, or still is a, a state law that has to be completed for any project that's new construction or over 20% uh, additions to the project. In this case, we're looking at roughly about 40% addition uh, to Chatham Park right now. Okay, so that's what's triggering that. Um, so we don't, we're not presenting everything this evening. Some of it's more mundane information, but I more wanted to go over the components of the final booklet that will be presented to all of you. Um, so if you go on the second page, the table of contents, and what I've highlighted is some of the items that we're gonna discuss this evening. Um, generally, there's an introduction, and I'm gonna, that's, uh, that's sort of gonna be uh, generally what I just spoke about. Um, site plans, floor plans, um, existing floor plans, and then really the, the main purpose of the Act 34 is identifying the cost of the new construction and presenting that to the public. Um, and I'll hit that on in a minute. Um, the, the next page, the introduction, is just what I mentioned of Act 34 was a law put in place in 1973. Um, so we would just present that information, essentially justifying the requirements for Department of Education. Um, we are proposing that this, the hearing would move pretty quickly. Um, really, I, I see that occurring only about 15 to 30 minutes at most of uh, the entire booklet. And again, that's more, I'd be open for any discussions uh, and any thought, but this should be a very straightforward Act 34, more just meeting the requirements. Uh, so that we're complete. In fact, there is nobody to submit the Act 34 booklet to at the Department of Education right now. So that's, uh, we're, we're really in this grayness of, we've had some uh, districts and solicitors even say not to uh, uh, submit an, or complete an Act 34, but usually we recommend it just to be safe. 
um, it doesn't hurt to have this this additional meeting okay uh, so the following the next uh, set of plans are really just uh, proposed site plan existing floor plans and then the floor plans that you've seen previously um, we usually don't make these uh, frankly we, we make it very just generic and straightforward this is about meeting a, a state requirement um, I sort of said that a few times but uh, this is not about having a real in-depth meeting, just uh, meeting those requirements and then and proceeding. The next couple pages after the floor plans is the DO2, DO3, and DO4. These are specifically uh, documents from Department of Education, plan con forms. Um, predominantly, what you're looking at is, again, uh, there is a category for both new construction as well as existing in the building. And while you as a district are concerned with the overall project cost, uh, which uh, we presented last month is roughly the total project cost is about 27.4 right now, really at the end of the day, Department of Education is focusing on the new construction component and that there will be, uh, by you approving the booklet, uh, essentially what you're really approving is the, the maximum cost for the new construction and then the opportunity for that to be presented to the public, okay? So um, I can answer any specific questions on the DO2, DO3, but this is probably the, the, the strong takeaway is on the DO3 page. Sort of to the, about three quarters to the, pay, the way down on the right side, you'll see 27.4. And that's the total, pro, total project cost that again has been presented to all of you, okay? The next page, the DO4, what this is identifying is um, site work costs. And they identify that because you, you remove those from the new construction. Um, they are only concerned with the new construction that is specifically building and not site work. So roughly you have about $1.6 million worth of site work. And then that gets the last page is the D20 really what we're identifying as a maximum. Uh, so pro about halfway down through the page, you'll see a $10.9 million number. And that is ultimately what the board would be accepting as in the final booklet. And then at the bottom of the page, Department of Education uh, uh, assumes that you may have fluctuations on bid day, so they have an 8% eight, 8 multiplier that you could be 8% higher on bid day without having to have a second Act 34 hearing, okay? So, so with that, um, those, are the, those are some of the, the components that we wanted to focus on this evening. I didn't want, to, you know, I didn't want this to be where we spent a half hour or, or longer going through the booklet. Um, there will also be some general overview of the project, just descri describing the project Generically, uh, what are we renovating inside the building, architecturally, mechanically, electrically, plumbing? Uh, what are the components of the new construction? What are the details of the mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems? Um, really everything that we've talked about over the last, gosh, six months, six to 12 months as we've designed the project, okay? Um, and then uh, there will also be a component with uh, your financial consultant um, and just, uh, as far as bonds and things of that nature, how you're financing the project. Okay, so, so I, I tried to move through that quickly and then really open it up to any questions that you have uh, related to, to this. I have uh, two comments. One is on the DTO, DO2. Um, I think it does a good job. I mean, there's a lot of figures on here, but where it shows the new existing and total um, 12.8 million for new, 12 million for existing for a total of 24.8 at the bottom of Plancon DTO2. And again, I think that reiterates that this is a project that's not just for the addition, but substantial investment is going to go in throughout um, the existing Chatham to upgrade the classrooms and, and all of that. So I think this is an, you know, a compelling breakdown to show um, the investment going in throughout the structure. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to say is I appreciate uh, doing this because it is a state requirement, but if anyone were listening and saying, oh, they're trying to just give us 15 minutes 
or so of a presentation that that is in fact not the case of you being here at this committee meeting and at other committee meetings there is ample opportunity to hear about the project see the ways that it has been Most developed definitely. and presented public comment input is uh, welcome throughout all of that so just wanted to put that you know context in um, that this Act 34 meeting is for one specific purpose, but it is certainly not a unique opportunity for members of our community to learn about or um, comment on this potential project. And I, and I would note to add to that, um, really, you're correct, we're trying to move through this just because it's a requirement. Um, but this booklet also will be available to the public for 20, 20 days before the hearing. Um, while I say 15, 15 to 30 minutes, if, if we do have a lot of participation by the public at that meeting, then no issues with the meeting going half hour, hour to go into full detail and answer questions that people might have. Uh, but typically we see it, you know, sort of being more straightforward in the presentations and you're correct. Obviously we've had a lot, quite a lot of, of public meetings through uh, to the board uh, through this entire project, both for the study and moving through the design, answering questions. Any other comments or questions on this matter? So, so that's a special meeting then. That's not a regular. It's not a regular board. It's not a regular board meeting or regular or regular finance and so meeting. That is a separate, standalone. So yeah. So what we're going to be doing is um, on just the cover of this. Tentatively, we're, we're showing May 9th. Right. Um, right. We are. There are some nuances that answers that we're trying to, to work through right now. Um, so we're either looking at May 9th or potentially then we might even move to the beginning of June. Um, and what we're trying to do is we don't want to have pull all of you out on an, an, an evening that is not, that there's not already a committee mm -hmm. or um, a board meeting. So we're, we're looking to coordinate that with you that essentially it would happen roughly an hour to half an hour before one, one of the uh, other public meetings. At 530, okay. The yep. project. Okay. And we were showing 5.30, so there would be adequate time. Okay. So. Jeff, I think it would be help, helpful for the board if you can go through that timeline of what they will be, like they will approve the Act 34 booklet before Correct. the Act 34 hearing. Um, then yeah, approve no, the it's project good. going out to bid. Very, the, very good point. Those so, concrete dates are, are very helpful for us. So, Two concrete, concrete dates. The first is you will be approving the booklet, okay? And uh, you will either approve the booklet next week on the 18th or May 2nd is what it will occur at one of, uh, one of your board meetings, okay? Um, after that, there will be a 20-day waiting period, and then we will have the hearing after a 20-day 20, 20, uh, period. We might go longer than 20 days just so that we're not having a special meeting on an, on an off night uh, that we try to uh, coordinate it with one of your other public meetings. So, so if we don't approve, so, if we don't approve next week, is, is this isn't going to happen on, on the ninth, then, right? And, and that's, that's uh, we, we were working on the booklet over the last week. Um, yeah. We've run into just a few you know, things that are taking a little bit longer than expected. Sure. Um, and that's why we're, you know, initially we're looking at May 9th. We might push it. Um, a little bit for the the final hearing. So, either next week on the 18th or May 2nd, you would approve the board. Then there would be that 20 day period, 20 day period, and it would either be on May 9th or your first meeting in in June. Is, is the dates that we're looking at? Okay. Thanks. So that's the overall process. And then maybe Ken, if you want to join us, uh, big picture. Um, so that's meeting the Act 34 requirement. Uh, separate from that, we're going. We're, we're um, actively involved right now in completing the the overall documents for the project. Um, we are targeting the beginning beginning of May to go to bid for the project, um, and then tentatively we would receive bids the the uh, beginning to the middle of June. And uh, well, bids end of May. Or end of end May. End of May to ish. Be, end of May, beginning of June. Exact dates TBD. Yeah, to be determined, um, and then tentatively, uh, we would be bringing those bids to you on June thirteenth. That was going to just be my question: that the Act thirty four doesn't need to happen, like that meeting doesn't need to happen before we go to bid. 
No, it, it has to be. They're kind of it has separate. To, it has to occur before you award contracts. Okay. And it can even be the night uh, that you would you would review the bids in, on June thirteenth um, is is something, and that's why we're looking we're looking at all those dates right now. Okay. Thank so. you. Will June thirteenth be, be the day that, that that we approve the bid, or? Yeah, that could, would be the goal. That's that would that would goal. be okay. that would be the goal. And then how long um, would it take after that to? I mean, obviously there, there there's you get the bid, there's contract development, which is usually usually a month or so, and then mobilization. I know that this summer is not going to be a lot of work done. So what? So there's a, a good amount. So we have um, knowing that and knowing the work we had to get done this summer. There's a Keystone Purchasing Network. We're going to have an early package. Okay. That's probably a few hundred thousand dollars worth of work to build temporary classrooms, get some things done ahead of time for that exact reason. Because if we award in June, realistically, the contractors aren't going to start till the end of the summer. And right. number one, all these bidders are going to be jam packed with summer work already. Uh, so really, uh, the main uh, four prime contract will start again sometime in August, realistically. Uh, but we will be coming to you uh, probably at the May 16th meeting to approve this early package cost. Uh, and we will not spend any of that. You'll be approving it to proceed, but only if the project comes under budget. We're not going to proceed with a bunch of work if for some reason there's an issue with uh, the project being over budget and we have to pause. Uh, so we'll go to, go to bid. Uh, we just need some flexibility there. It is around Memorial Day and the holidays, and a lot of times bids will push a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, worst case, we, you know, request a special meeting to award if we had to. And then you also, uh, you, and, and you also you mentioned temporary classrooms. Yes. Are we, are we going with modulars, or are we going to find spots within the uh, building? No. So we're going to use the auditorium. We're going to demolish right. okay. the interior of the auditorium <clears throat> for the new concrete floor, which will become the new gym next summer. Use that to build four. Excuse me, six. Well, five temporary classrooms and a small uh, office space. Um, so we'll shift a few folks around. If I mentioned that before, I wanted to make sure that, that, was, yeah. that they were going to still be inside the building. Yeah, it's, it, we thought about modulars, but it honestly is a pain logistically right. for the teachers and everyone. And at the middle school, we did in Gym D four temporary classrooms, and it worked very well. Okay. Um, so I think that really kind of summarizes where we're at. Oh, excuse me. Well, for the middle school, um, the middle school is being bid as part of this project as an ad alternate. So um, the other part of the whole process with everything, uh, Chatham Park, we are going to, uh, we just submitted our land development application. So we'll be going to the planning board next month. There is no zoning for Chatham. Uh, and then we just confirmed some things today for the middle school. We do have to go for a few zoning items Middle school doesn't is a completely non-conforming site, similar to what we went through with the high school. Um, so there's a little zoning we have to deal with there, and then we'll go to planning right after that. So all that will be done May, June, July. What's the? I'm just curious. What's the zoning issue with the middle school? I mean, it's all non-conforming, uh, obviously. Is doesn't it doesn't any impervious <laughs> building coverage. Okay. You know, you're basically you're all building. You know, that's what I thought. I, I thought it was impervious. Yeah. It's okay. It doesn't meet parking. It doesn't meet building coverage. It just, <laughs> it meets nothing. Right. No, that's fine. I, 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 I figured, but we're not doing anything. But Chatham luckily has no zoning. Yeah. That's you know that's part of the reason why the building still needs, addition yeah. was turned a little bit. It still needs planning commission approval though. I, it still needs to plan, both need planning approval, right. land development approval, correct. And the middle school cafeteria is not part of the Act 34 package because it's, um, is it because it doesn't meet the threshold for modifications to that building or is it because correct. it's an ad alternate? Correct, because since we're only, uh, we're not adding more than 20% to the middle school, then correct, that's not true. There's no uh, Act 34 for the middle school, correct. Yeah. So. What are the other, and so I know the, the cafeteria is an ad alternate. Weren't there some other ad alternates as well that are, that are being uh, We are evaluating uh, those right now. Um, you're going to have a series of finish alternates, uh, and we're going through all those as well right now. Uh, we're also looking at solar is going to be uh, an alternate related to the project. I'm looking for that. So <laughs> we'll, we will have all those for you to um, help control things on bid day. Great. So, Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? 
If not, thank you. Great. Thank you both for being here. Thank yeah. You. And thanks for keeping it moving along. Okay. So next I will be presenting the proposed budget for the 24-25 fiscal year. I'll do it from here. Yeah, thank you. So starting with slide two, um, where we'll look at revenues, expenditures, and then we'll take a look at the fund balance, how it's impacted by the upcoming operating budget. Slide three is going to show the proposed revenues that we're looking at for next year. Um, local revenues, which primarily is driven by your taxpayer funds, um, we have that at a change of 3.9 million or 3.3 percent. Um, the budget was built on a 4 percent increase. Um, some of the other items in that local revenue have decreased and also with a change in assessments, um, 4 percent doesn't equal 4 percent because some of the assessment value did drop overall for the district. And then your state revenue is driven primarily on your um, subsidies for basic ed, special ed funding, transportation subsidies as well. For your local revenue, again, I just highlighted that the millage increase is in this budget at 4%. Your maximum allowable is 5.3%, which represents the Act 1 index for the district. Um, and as I mentioned, there was a reduction in the total assessed value for all the properties in the district, which equates to about $178,000 um, loss in collectible taxes. Um, as far as your state revenue, your basic ed funding um, the governor's current proposal is to give districts, to allocate districts their 23-24 basic ed funding, as well as they added two additional funding streams, um, one being based on student weight um, for investment in school district basic ed programs, and then another distribution um, looking at an, adequate, an adequacy uh, investment for basic education. Special ed, um, they're looking at the 23-24, as well as they also added an additional share of 383 million and it's based on weighted average and the market value aid ratio of the district. So as you can see from this slide, um, we just have a snapshot of districts in the county and how they were how they will receive the two additional funding streams in the basic ed funding formula. Um, as of now, Haverford is looking at just at 289,000 for the student weighted portion and there is no funding allocated for the adequacy investment. And you can just see how we rank along with the other districts. As far as the special education funding, um, we're at about an additional 33,000 based on what our 23-24 uh, special education funding was. And again, that's based on um, the amount of students in the district that require services, um, enrollments, and also your aid, your aid ratio. As far as your proposed expenditures, overall expenditures are going to go up around 4.27% um, with salaries and employee benefits being your largest portion. Um, and your, per, your purchase professional services, you can see there's a decrease there in that line item. That's primarily due to moving away from some IU services um, that weren't needed. Um, so there's other areas how they're, they're going to educate those students and provide the needed services. They're your biggest items. Your dues, fees, and debt service are actually decreasing. Um, in the current year budget, there was money budgeted for new debt service. Um, just considering that maybe that we would go out in this fiscal year for the upcoming renovations. And since we did not do that, um, we're actually realizing a little bit of a savings because the actual um, debt service that we're going to anticipate when we go out for the bonds is, is lower than what we had in this year's budget. So um, that will have a little bit of a lower impact. Some of the expenditure highlights, um, we are maintaining all the current programs with no cuts or reductions. Um, the increased debt service, as we know, is associated with the facility renovations for the projects. 
This also addresses for fiscal 22-23 and 23-24 actual utilization of the prescription plan, which was under budgeted in, in those fiscal years. Um, and it also addresses a 6.8% increase in prescription for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, and that's based on information we get from the Delaware Valley Health Trust. Um, so that's what we're, we work with for that. This also maintains all contractual obligations for employees and staff. Um, as far as expenditure highlights continuing on that, um, it addresses this addresses enrollment growth in special education, um, adding a path teacher at the high school and, and a, an autistic support teacher at the middle school and a supervisor of special programs, which we're looking to fund with access funds. Um, and that's monies that we generate through the Medicaid program for students that receive services. Um, this budget also addresses enrollment growth in general education to include an assistant principal at the high school, a 10 month secretary position at the middle school and a half of a reading specialist at Chatham, um, partially um, or fully to be determined, uh, supported with Title I funds. It also finalizes the goal to support MTSS interventionist positions, and you can see there's three of those, um, and some IA positions at the elementary level, uh, two of those as well. Some expenditures for consideration, and this would be based on potential funding streams um, that could support it, would be an elementary social skills teacher and a custodial position at Chatham Park. So for your proposed budget, uh, we're looking at revenues um, at 150,460,000, expenditures of 152,476. So you're looking at a, an operating deficit for the budget year of a little over $2 million. Um, the end result would be to utilize your unassigned fund balance to support that in, for this uh, upcoming year. Uh, looking at the tax cre increase in that middle section, 5.3% um, is what you have to work with as your Act 1 index. This budget addresses it at 4%. So you can see off to the right um, what our current millage is and what the millage would look like at that 4% mark. As far as how this affects the average assessed value, so just taking the residential properties and getting a strict average from that, at a $346,000 um, assessment, taxes this year on that property are 6294 next year at the 4% increase would be 6546 so you're looking at an annual increase of $252 for that property owner fund balance so at July 1 of 24 we're going to start with an unassigned fund balance of a little over 11 million um, with the projected use of fund balance for, for the operating budget for next year um, would bring you down to a little over 9 million, which leaves you at 5.9% of unreserved fund balance, uh, knowing that you're, the district cannot exceed 8% in order to raise taxes. So you're still within that um, comfort range of an, an unreserved fund balance. So from this point, your next steps is that at the May 2nd meeting, the board would vote to uh, adopt the proposed final budget. So it's not the final final, it's just the proposed final to kind of give um, the public an idea of where the district is going with a budget. Um, at that May 9th meeting, you would have the ability then to discuss further um, if there are any changes you would wanna make from that proposed to the final budget adoption. By May 24th, which is 20 days prior to your final, you would need to put that proposed final from May 2nd out for public inspection. And there's a, a form, a PD 2028 form that we would utilize. We would have it available on our website. Um, certainly we could have it available in the offices for um, anyone who would want to come and look at that budget. Uh, by June 3rd, you would have to have a public notice of final budget adoption. And that's just backing up from the June 13th meeting where you would make your final budget adoption. And then any questions on that budget presented? Thanks for the presentation. I just uh, the four percent increase. Could you put that in context for new people new to the board? Uh, in previous years, how what has been the increase? I believe last year. Let's see if I have it in that presentation. I believe you were at around two point seven two percent. Okay. And I could definitely and forward that out board. to the board. Yeah. You we can look at that because you also want to look at what the Act 1 index was. Mm -hmm. Right. I can provide that comparison. I think from previous presentations, we're just looking at, you know, potentially a fairly large increase in terms of recent history would be my assumption. But um, anyway, I'm just curious okay. what, yeah. the Act, what the Act 1 has been and what we've done. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And 
um, another request for information is I think it's always helpful. These are large numbers, right? Like $150 million is um, just a, a big figure, hard for the board and the community to get their, their heads around. Um, we run a large operation, which is mostly comprised of, you know, our, all of, it's all for our students' services and then um, it, it's our staffing. So I think it is helpful when possible to try to relate the budget to you know how many students dollars per students how much of it is for staff to try to make it a little more uh, tangible and um, you know show how the funds are going to um, these costs that are very necessary mm -hmm. to run the program the quality of program that our community expects and um, continues that investment in our curriculum, our facilities, right? Just, I think it's helpful to have that um, context in addition to seeing the year over year changes. Absolutely. I think um, Shapiro's budget, the proposed budget had a, they computed the equity um, disbursement based on a certain cost per student that they felt was equitable. And I, I, along the lines of what Bridget just indicated, it might be, I think it would be useful to have that per student number, um, you know, for the for the public. And and what I don't know if we necessarily need the the number in the Shapiro budget for the equity, but you know we're not getting an equity um, disbursement, and that's because we exceed that number. So you wanted to see it for that first funding stream, right? The I, I, just an explanation for why we're not getting an equity funding. Mm -hmm. And then they also had a component of tax equity was a component for the top 33% uh, or above the 66th quartile of districts that uh, depend on local uh, effort for their funding. And uh, I know we don't qualify for that either. So. Are there things in this budget that are still in the process of being reviewed or um, confirmed? Like, should we expect changes going forward, or is is this you know, pretty near where you think it will land? I think it's it's pretty near where, where it will land. Certainly, if any anything unexpected comes up, we would incorporate that in. But at this point, it's, it's pretty solid to go forward. Our budget manager, sorry, the different budget managers, and when I say budget manager, that would be like the building principal, the director of transportation, director of technology, director of facilities, um, director of security. Each of those individuals manage a budget for the, you know, for the district. In addition to um, our director of people services, assistant superintendent, doing all the, you know, all the curriculum work, um, they have been um, refining. Uh, erasing, <laughs> sharpening their pencil points um, since the beginning of Feb uh, February, um, when they took you know took a look at this. So uh, it does not address all of the requests that that have been made. But I think part of the budget process, it, you know, people know that you get to a point where priorities you know, need to, need to be made. I, I believe I already know the answer to this, but I think it might be helpful for public to, to know we're looking to increase um, the taxes while still having a nine million fund balance. And so just having a sense of like, why? Why is it beneficial for us to hold that much um, in a fund balance at this point in time? Um, yeah. Sure. So the general theory behind having an unassigned fund balance is, for, is really to support those one time expenditures that may come up. Um, districts generally don't want to use that for ongoing operating expenses. It really gives you that flexibility or an assurance that if something were to happen, um, you could you could support that cost. And it's good to know if there were ever a change in the funding streams or a delay in the funding streams, 
you would have that temporarily to rely on if for whatever reason the budget and I, I know there was a prior year I forget where it was that they really held off on approving the budget so districts had to actually dip into that on reserve and if you took that and broke it down by the number of operating days we have it's really not that much um, on a daily basis to cover the instructional and operational costs sure. and I would guess too that um, with that fund balance as part of our financial condition um, when we are going to the bond market to try to raise money for the capital projects that that is something that those investors consider about our financial strength um, to have an adequate but not too large not too small um, just right. uh, yeah just right Goldilocks kind of fund balance to support the district in that kind of worst case what if scenario um, but that is one of the factors that has led our district to be favorably assessed in its financial condition so it's definitely a driver in that and they will even ask when we have our ratings call for the bonds um, they will look at your fund balance um, what's the upcoming budget look like how does the district plan on supporting that fund balance do you have a fund balance policy in place that says you know we're not going to dip below so that your investors do have a comfort level that they are making a good investment with uh, with purchasing those bonds just seeing some of these numbers i'm looking again at the expenditures slide and um, noted the increase in employee benefits um, the supplies is also one that has a higher uh, rate of increase can you speak to what that um, additional cost may be for? That's Jen. Oh, that's Jen. Yes. In addition to, to uh, you know, a, a certain percentage of that is just the rising cost mm -hmm. associated with, with supplies. But certainly, yeah, right. Inflation has really hit paper costs. It hit uh, a lot of our supply costs. But a large amount of that is uh, what we've been doing with our updating of science materials to match the steels standards. You've heard Dr. Nesbitt talk about having to break up those purchases over three years because it is so costly at the elementary level. That's looking at uh, 95 new kits for the elementary teachers. And then at the secondary level, it's purchasing, in addition to kits, it's purchasing uh, textbooks or uh, workbooks, you know, things that are updating for those. And then we also have some funds in there um, if there is the potential to um, start to pioneer any new ELA resources as a result of our audit and the process that's been going on with development so far, which you'll hear more about in May, um, that there are funds there to support that. Um, because we sort of have a, a, a thought in mind about how to implement that in a similar process to what we've been doing with science. Thank you, and that, yeah, I think that kind of context is similar to like what is our budget on a per student basis, but showing some of these tangible uh, purchases and, and supplies for the classrooms that students will use and benefit from is a nice way to, to put some of these dollars into context, thanks. I personally like to see the 0.5 reading specialist for Chatham. I'm hoping that we've got another 0.5 funding somewhere or somehow that equates to additional personnel and not. She's currently 0.5, so this would be making that position a full, uh, full-time equivalency position, full-time. Okay, I love that less. Can we get more? Can we get I'm with you on that, so. <laughs> So we'll have this on the agenda again when we have the committee meeting in, in May. And so we'll ask the board, you know, you're just seeing this for this evening, send questions in, and that will help Tony to frame what we will speak about that evening. So moving on to the informational item section, the first item in this section uh, relates to uh, BBD LLP, who is the district auditor that we've utilized to do the fiscal year audit on an annual basis. Uh, after they do the 23-24 fiscal year audit, um, their contract will be up for renewal. So this is just presenting to the board another three-year renewal for that audit firm 
to handle the audit for the district. Um, they're looking at, I think it's about a thousand dollar increase in each fiscal year. Um, just as a note, they, um, that charges primarily for doing the audit, the audit reporting, um, but they don't charge us extra if we call them throughout the year for different questions, just to verify that we're in compliance on certain matters um, leading up to that audit. So it is a nice um, operating relationship that we've had with that firm. And the second item is your March 23-24 revenue and expense report. So we're getting, getting close to the end of the year and you'll start to see the um, revenues will start to uh, peak now. Uh, they should be close to finalized, except for some of the state subsidies, which um, will come in towards the end of the year, and as well as your expenditures will wrap up um, in June. And the third item in there is the new phone system. So Rob will have um, at the next voting meeting the approval to go ahead with the recommended vendor for the phone system. Is that correct? Okay. We sent that information mm -hmm. last week to the, to the board. Okay. And the fourth item uh, on for here. For the phone uh, system thing, does, um, I saw that there was different proposals and pros and cons and things. Will, um, to what extent will like the staff experience something different and will members of the community who call in like will the district phone numbers or anything change like anything <laughs> so the uh the experience for the public won't change all of our phone numbers will stay the same um when they dial in um it'll be a new recording when you call in than the old one mm. but that'll really be the only change that the public will notice um when they dial into the district. Um, as far as staff, um, initially, we're just replacing the phones that are in the classrooms and on the desk. So it'll be a new phone than the one they've had before, but functionality, no change. Um, but then we're looking to add in, it has a soft phone option, so you can uh, receive desk phone calls on your cell phone or on your computer and things like that, so that some of our staff that aren't always in their office can still receive calls coming to their desk without having to kind of be at their desk all the time. So in the short term, not, not, not a lot will change for staff, but long term, there'll be more functionality. Yeah, that um, phone call that follows you everywhere is a, a blessing, blessing and, a curse. and a curse, right? Like yeah. that. <laughs> but thank you for the summary of the proposals. Thanks. Thanks to the committee members that you work with as well, looking at the systems and The next item on the informational agenda is the uh, proposal for the owner's representation services for the construction phases of both the middle school cafeteria and Chatham Park Elementary School. So they were in your packet and it's basically the services provided by uh, CBD to oversee those projects. I had a question when I was reviewing that proposal um, and I know Ken Matthews is stepped out now, but um, I think it had a line item uh, for over, sort of overhead costs um, in this you know, clerical, um, there's some other contingencies that it wasn't just, for example, just their time. So I was just curious more detail about it. It, it just said it covered these things, but I didn't know what we were expecting in terms of that. It, it does say how many hours that it's going to take Ken and Scott, I believe, to oversee that. but. I was just curious about the overhead costs. Thank you. Absolutely. And the last item to touch on is the property tax rent rebate program. Um, I know we've talked about this in previous meetings. Um, and I want to thank Dr. Shelton for um, doing the research and providing information on the other districts that do uh, participate or that don't participate in this program, just kind of getting an overall look at this. Um, I do think it probably would be the best option, at least for this budget year, to kind of advocate for taxpayers who don't know that there's a program for Pennsylvania to kind of get out there and help them um, get enrolled into that program and, and reap the benefits of what the state is offering. Uh, and then I think that would definitely serve as a guide to help um, see what the participation is in the program once those additional taxpayers enroll and kind of give the board a feeling of, okay, this is where we 
um, could see a target if we did a 100% match or if we did a 50% match. Um, just a little more updated information than what we currently have out there as far as participation. Um, and truly, you could see from the information, um, Haverford is not an outlier in the, in the county. In fact, there's only one district in the county that participates um, and participates at a 100% match. So, um, you know, it's just something that I think we can help guide um, maybe through a policy committee where we put that into place and really work out the terms of the program and, and come to a decision on that moving forward. Yeah, I would just comment that, you know, given that we are, we will be raised, raising by 4% or the proposed budget is a 4% increase and that this PTRR program helps, uh, you know, disabled and seniors on very limited income. Um, I think it's definitely worth uh, advertising and making sure people are aware, but I'll, I'd also advocate that we consider, you know, maybe not, you know, if not this year, but next year, uh, sort of supplementing what the state is doing. So, and Tony will be able to get from the state what the utilization is in the, in the township, and so we right. can monitor that and, you know, have a better sense of if you see some districts do a, anywhere from 25 to 40 percent match um, with only one in Delaware County and, and a, one outside doing a full match. So what right. would the difference be? How do they make those decisions mm -hmm. as to what, you know, what percentage they would look at? Um, so we can do more research, learn more about it, and get more data. Okay, so the current proposal would be to this year advertise it, mm -hmm. see, yep. see what the response is, and then we can consider it next year. Yes, okay. Absolutely. And that's all I have for informational items. Okay, uh, those were the agenda items. There is an opportunity for public comment. If anyone has any finance or facility matters they would like to discuss with the board. Seeing none, the committee is adjourned. Thank you.